In November 2018, a group of leaders from Lowell Public Schools spent a day at Acera. A result of that is that Wendy decided she wanted her K-8 school to really bring all of what we do at Acera into her environment. My first trip to Acera was, was like, it, it's one of those um, experiences where you, you sort of like uh, experience a paradigm shift in thinking. Everyone was really busy. Um, everyone was very intently busy. There was so much purpose in what they were doing. There was so much intentionality. And I saw so much guidance from teachers. And, and, and I thought there was something here for us. There is something here for us. There are, are principles of this learning that belong in public school that kids who maybe can't afford a tuition in the tens of thousands um, but deserve the same opportunities to be thinkers, designers, risk takers, makers of tomorrow. The goals for our whole school project with the Lowell K-8 school are framed inside the context of a school success dashboard to measure what really matters. So beyond just standardized test scores, we're also looking at measurements for growth in students' core capacities and habits of mind, things like creativity and conceptual problem solving. We're looking at measurements for positive school culture and student well-being, and we're looking at measures to make sure teachers are using evidence-based practice in their classrooms rather than just habits of the past. Through this partnership, I really do believe we are crafting um, a new way of thinking and learning in public schools that are going to take um, possibilities for urban students, for students in, in, in urban environments, and start weaving in um, skills, practices, habits, and ways of thinking that are going to set our students up for not only jobs in the 21st century, but setting the stage for what's coming in the 22nd century. Um, first one, you're going to see how it comes out. You're going to um, test it, and then you're going to figure out what, can, what do you think we can do as a group, right? As you're mixing it, someone might, in this table, someone might come up and have like the perfect consistency that you want. So you might say, what did you do different? And I said, this is where the talking comes in. Okay, you go to scientists now at the table trying to figure out what's working. So today we're here doing our second project day. Uh, and we're thinking of today more as a project launch rather than a project day, which is a little bit different than what we did with our first project day on polymers. And the intent really was to get everybody excited about getting messy and you know mixing art and science in all sorts of interesting ways. And this project that we did today is more about how can we begin embedding scientific thinking, art, STEAM education in all different content areas in all different places. We chose it to fit in with our nonfiction um, curriculum that we do around reading and writing where kids are going to actually research an animal. And in doing that, they need to come up with three facts that they've learned about an animal. At the end of that um, unit, they're going to create a keychain um, that they can practice with this little LED and add this exciting piece to. We'll see frogs and we'll see sharks and all kinds of fun little things, but this is just a way to pull them in and engage them. As far as the circuitry goes, I think they're going to have a lot of fun with that. And I think what I'll choose to do is not necessarily tell them how to do it or even give them the idea that I know how, but I might say, boys and girls, I have no idea how this works. Let's try and figure this out together. Let's play with this. And if you can figure it out, let's share together on how this works. In fourth grade, we're learning about regions, and the kids are going to make a brochure picking one of the regions we've learned, the Northeast, maybe the Southwest, whichever one they want. And then we just learned about circuits and making up a light-up card. So we're going to take the light-up card portion of this and incorporate it into our map so that hopefully we can get them to light up. So if they're doing the Northeast region, they're a little LED light will light up to the northeast when you open and close it, or whichever region they decided to report about. 
So this is the piece that was leading up to our circuitry project. So this was their design packet. Um, as you can see, they have all different pieces that they could select from. And it wasn't that they just couldn't just go and select because it looked cool. They had to have a reason behind why they made the selection, why they wanted a chewing mouth versus a siphoning mouth or a piercing mouth. To actually have to really think about why they want to use the different parts and what their functions are to, to create their own insect, you can put those skills to other things in life. Like there's a purpose for why things are created a certain way. And so to put it in a creative way that the kids will get excited about and like who, who wouldn't want to create a, a super bug and be able to name it and create it. Well now they get to do it in science class. You know, it's not just book work. It's they want to come to school there. I had full attendance today. You know, it was the same as the last project, full attendance. So if that's what we gotta do that's what we do, you know. It's I want the kids to want to come to school. And just to see their enthusiasm and passion is perfect. What I saw today when I walked around was a, a, a different kind of enthusiasm. Although uh, on the surface it may have looked a little bit more subdued because the excitement on slime day was just level 10 the whole day. Um, today I saw kids that were hyper-focused, that were as engaged in their circuitry as they were in their art, as they were in their context. So they were taking learning that they had done that was connected to a unit of study that already exists here in the curriculum for little public schools. Um, and we were amplifying that. We were bringing in the project-based elements, we were bringing in the art elements, um, and we were bringing in the circuitry into a unit that is otherwise traditionally just a very life science-based. Um, and so what I'm seeing now is I'm seeing teachers able to think differently about how all of the different units of instruction that we have, which are great in our curriculum, can be amplified, modified to intertwine STEAM education in much more organic ways that result in student work products that they have a ton of ownership over, that they're extremely proud of. The interesting part is I find that um, that kids and adults were all uh, really particular about our art. Um, we have our own sort of uh, aesthetic standards, um, and I saw a lot of that attention to detail manifest both with the circuitry, um, the placement of their copper taping, the LEDs. The kids wanted to get things right, but it was right in their heads. They were all using the same scientific processes. They were all applying the same learning concepts, but they were holding themselves to higher standards um, and their own aesthetic definition of what was going to be a really good work product, and that is really exciting to see. I was very impressed with how the kids were with the last project that we did, the slime, they were very engaged and they continue to amaze me when we do projects like this. Um, knowing the, the intricacy and, the, and how delicate you have to be with creating a circuit to at the end of the period have every single kid have a working circuit with no problems, um, kind of blew my mind. <laughs> Nice job. Do you know what that means? You laid a fantastic curve connector. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm really proud of you. Good job. How invested they are in their projects, it makes me want to even invest more because it was a lot to put the project together. To So to see them invested in it, it makes it worth it. It makes me want to continue to do more and more projects hands-on versus dealing with book work because to do a hands-on project like this I find that the kids really grab grab onto the information and are able to internalize it and really put it to use. I can't wait to finally put the book. I can't wait to see the books. That's what like Thursday and Friday is going to be awesome. One example of the work we're doing together is we've customized an eight question survey that really gets at the heart of positive school culture and student well-being, as well as authentic engagement and learning at school. And Pine has committed to do this survey discussion as part of counselor-led sessions four times through the course of the school year. And already, they're using the results of that survey to change what they're doing in their classrooms. Specifically, they've implemented new projects to really make sure that every child has a positive relationship with an adult in the building, that the student identifies that. And another key idea is that 
kids' low scores on saying that they really are interested in what they're learning at school is influencing them to take on the idea of an individual learning plan for every child next school year. This will be a key part of our work together.